uh, uh, next is uh, Wiley uh, Peacock, some chemistry and biochemistry, and uh, his presentation entitled Hero Fumbing the uh, Safe Life with uh, Blood Clots. Right now, at this very moment, our bodies are literally tearing themselves apart. There are blood vessels inside of us that are so narrow that when a single red blood cell tries to squeeze through, that blood vessel ruptures, causing internal bleeding. Internal bleeding can be fatal. However, our bodies do produce a defense against this, and really any type of bleeding. And that is the enzyme named thrombin. I like to think of thrombin as this superhero plumber that circulates in our blood. And whenever thrombin comes across a damaged blood vessel, it grabs other molecules from the blood, stuffs them in its mouth, and then uses that to plug the hole. However, thrombin is really good at its job. And once it starts creating blood clot, even though thrombin does have other important functions, it really doesn't know when to stop. And if that blood clot gets so big that it actually blocks the blood vessel, it can create a thrombosis. A thrombosis is more common than you'd think, and it can kill you. This is particularly concerning in the field of medicine, because surgeons who make cuts and nurses that give injections are damaging blood vessels in the process. The current class of thrombin inhibitors that could be used to prevent a thrombosis from happening are actually pretty harmful to a patient. They essentially destroy a patient's entire thrombin supply. Well, the results of my research may actually offer a safer solution. You see, thrombin has a sidekick named thrombomodulin. And thrombomodulin's function is to basically come along and say, yo, thrombin, chill out, okay, you did it. You stopped the leak. Now go do one of your other functions. You know, go home, see your kids. And even though we've known about the relationship between these two for over 30 years, we still don't know exactly how this message is communicated. The explanation that my research works on is that thrombomodulin actually changes the way that thrombin jiggles. You can think of enzymes like thrombin as these jiggly little molecular hairballs. The method that my research uses places a small probe in the solution around thrombin. And that probe gives off a signal that basically tells us how much the different regions of thrombin are jiggling. And what we see is that when thrombin is alone, it jiggles in one way. And when thrombin jiggles that way, it's able to grab onto those molecules and make the blood clot. However, when thrombomodulin is present, thrombin jiggles in a different way. And when it jiggles that way, it can't grab onto molecules in the same way, and it can't create the blood clot. In particular, there's this one region of thrombin that we see is stabilized when thrombomodulin is present. And when this region is stabilized, we see that in turn, the mouth of thrombin may actually be stabilized in a particular conformation or orientation that we think is really prime for switching thrombin's activity towards its other functions. Imagine, we could create a drug using this, inf this information that either enhances or mimics the effect of thrombomodulin on thrombin. This would not be dangerous to a patient at all because it's taking advantage of an already natural relationship. So we could, doctors could give this to patients, prevent a thrombosis from happening, but not have to worry about causing any damage to a patient at all. And so really, you know, in short, my research, studying this little plumber jiggle inside of us, may actually one day help doctors save lives. And so, you know, right now I want to take a moment. Can we all give a round of applause for the little, little plumber inside of us that is keeping us alive? <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Vaidi. Thank so uh, this is a very engaged uh, research that you're doing on the blood clot and the relation to thrombosis. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, what do you do in your free time? Uh, well, you know, we live in beautiful San Diego. We get a lot of sunlight, so I try to go outside, do lots of activities out there. Love the beach. I like to rock climb as well. Do you do any tra hiking, trailing? Hiking, backpacking, camping. What would, would be the uh, favorite uh, trail that you, you Follow. Oh man, well last summer I, was, I hiked the John Muir Trail, which was 19 oh, days of backpacking, <gasps> yeah. 14 days without showering. Okay. After five days, you don't get stinkier. Uh, don't tell me that you go back to the lab right after that. <laughs> I showered first. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.